you do it the wrong way. <laughs> and then two weeks later, as you've just said, four weeks later, they're back doing the same thing again. They've lost interest. Coach, the one thing I did this year, I took some of your advice and I started eight weeks before the holidays with my workout program. So then it wasn't really like a New Year's resolution. Great. That once the New Year got here, hey, there's nothing to break because I've been doing it for a while. And I know I've had you on the show for years and years and I go through these ups and downs. I'm on an up right now. It's been about eight weeks working out every day and feel good building some muscle. But I think like a lot of people out there watching today, you get to a plateau where, one, where you start getting bored. Mm -hmm. Two, where you don't see any more muscle growth. That initial change is over with. So what do you do? And this isn't geared towards me. This is geared toward everybody out sure. there experiencing this. Sure, but, but we'll attack it through you. How does that sound? What do you do? I, I think for you, especially for you, you said you get bored. And I think a lot of people do get bored because there aren't a ton of people that just wake up every morning and say, I can't wait to work out and I, I want to work out all day and I just live for this stuff. Now, there are some, but I think most people, they use this because they know this is what they need to do to get to where they want to be, but they also realize I don't like it too much and if I could do it and take a pill, a magic pill, and not have to work out and not have to watch what I eat, I'd much rather do that. So getting bored is something that happens to a lot of folks because this is so repetitive. So let's not make it so repetitive. I think having different types of workouts or a variety of your training will be very good. And for you, that's one thing I've been kind of flirting with in my thoughts when I think about you and think about your training. And then when we get together and talk about what to do for you, I'm thinking the next big thing for you is doing a varietal approach. We have a different workout on a Monday, a different workout on a Tuesday. Wednesday's a different kind of a thing. We come back on Thursday, go back to Monday's workout. On Friday is Tuesday's workout, and on Saturday is Wednesday's workout with a break on Sunday. And we rotate it like that. And then once we go through eight to 10 weeks of that, we go to a different program and we gauge the success based on how your body is responding. So we do a little testing evaluation. We find out where your body is when you start. We compare those numbers. We see how you're doing and what you're doing well with, and then we make some changes. How does that sound? It, it sounds good, but the, que the question here, and we talk about this on every show, sure. is that people will feel that if they go to a customized fitness program or mm -hmm. a fitness approach mm -hmm. that this is going to cost them an arm and a leg. But you don't have to go every single day. You don't right. have to go every week. It can be a once every two weeks. Every and honestly, sure. let's be honest, I have never worked a program of yours. You know, right. I mean, in terms of the advice you give me here on the show, I take that incorporated exactly. in to what I'm doing, right. but I physically have never, <laughs> you would think I would be smart well, yeah, and do it, yeah. but I physically have not worked under in a, of your program. Sure, I've taken sure. what you have told us here on the show and utilized it, right. and honestly, it's probably why I fail so much. <laughs> yeah, I, well, <laughs> okay, we're not going to go. <laughs> this is really good. No, this, uh, John, this. put that on the center <laughs> shot. This okay, <laughs> the center shot, John. That would be the center shot. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> what I meant, Coach, <laughs> is that yeah. by me not, I guess, signing up and coming to your gym and taking your specific one-on-one -on -one instructions, sure. that's why I fail. I take from you the 30 minutes I get here on the show sure. and say, okay, I'm not going to spend the money. I can do this all myself. And you know that's what everybody at home is doing. Oh, of course. And that's why they fail. That's what I meant by that. No, I got it. I got okay. it. I, just, I didn't know. I was setting the record straight. I didn't you know gave me that look did. like, sure. oh, my God. <laughs> no. Okay. No, I just was trying to follow where you were going with this. No, and, and you know what? A, a lot of people do fail because, you no, know, due to that reason. But there are some folks, and, and, and you are a person who has a lot of get up and go. We've established that fact on the show before. You have the ability to take some information and follow it on your own, and so do a lot of people. And a lot of folks who either A, cannot afford personalized instruction or a customized approach where they're paying some money on a day-to-day -day basis, that's fine. They don't need to do that. I think having the guidance, having the planning ability, having the ability to get tested and evaluated so you know where you are, 
And so you can have a program designed for you that works best for you, that will work for you. That's important. Now that's a once every so often type thing, and that's a very affordable proposition. For you, I think having a program that's designed for you, like that varietal approach I just talked about, you could do that. You could follow that. And people don't even really need to go and have something custom designed for them. If they want to take an approach like that, how about just I'm going to walk up hills on Monday? I'm going to do a lot of fast walking on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I'm going to ride my bike. On Thursday, I'm going to swim. On Friday, I'm going to jog in the park a long distance slow and go put in the, put in the time not, and not worry about the distance. And then on Saturday, I'm going to take a break. On Sunday, I'll take a break. And then back at it Monday through Friday. So there are different things that you can do if you get very imaginative. But on the other side of that coin, when you look at what you spend on daily expenses, you look at what people spend on diet supplements, on right. these things that they know that are not going to work. You could take that sum of money. Maybe it's the coffee money every day. Maybe it's the once a week one out to eat. Put that money together and utilize that money for like an initial setup with a trainer somewhere to get that, that, that program feedback on where you are and what will help you most. That is absolutely true. And many people do that. They're doing that now because they recognize I can't do this on my own. I've tried, I've failed miserably, I don't know what I'm doing, I didn't go to school for this, or some people are even coming to us and saying, I hurt myself. I don't know how I did it, and I'm scared to do anything else, but I know I need to. Can you show me the right way to do things? Can you put something together for me? And we do. So you can take a few dollars that you would normally spend on some of these diet aids and the things that you've talked about, and not, don't buy those and turn around and put that towards some guidance, some direction, get a program designed for you. And now you learn the program and you're off and running. You've got a goal and you've got a game plan. When you turn on the television, a quarter of the channels have some kind of health and fitness type workout program. They're trying to sell you something that you wear that will make you lose weight. Or they're trying to sell you some kind of supplement. If you had to just ballpark on a 100% basis, how much of that stuff is baloney and how much of that stuff really works, where would you throw that at? I mean, is it in the 70, 80% that's just baloney? That's an interesting question now compared to when you asked me that question 10 years ago. In today's day and age, we're getting more science behind some of this salesy stuff, some of these products and services, I would say 80% of everything that you see, you read, and you hear about probably is not going to work for you or it's not going to work for the, the general public. Maybe anywhere from 15 to 20% could actually have the possibility of helping in some way, shape, or form. But picking out what is right and what will work and what is effective is the difficult thing to do because you don't know. And so the thing that makes advertising such an incredible industry is that it is very seductive. They're very smart. They study human nature and they know just how to push the right buttons in you, the TV watcher. So you'll sit there and go, ooh, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, that's what I need. That's what I'm going to buy because I'm going to do that. And they see themselves doing this for the next two years and getting in great shape. When you also filter through the stations, you see, or, or you go to the mall, to the mall or even a grocery store, you'll see cans and bottles of every kind of supplement out there. And you'll look at them and you're just mesmerized by how many different things that are out there. I was trying to do some research on how much protein to take in if you're working out, if you're not working out. And I rolled across one that said 40%. That, that's astounding. 40% of the calories you intake in a day needs to be brought in by protein. Yeah, well, I think first you have to understand that's a number, a ball, that's a number that is thrown out there. I don't think you can ballpark and have one number that works and makes sense for every body's human chemistry. Everyone is different. And there are different dynamics of movement, of exercise, of activity, of life that occur on a day-to-day -day basis with a person. So that you may, 40% may work great for you because that's the kind of activity level that you're at. 
but it may not work great for the next guy who isn't doing what you do or who doesn't assimilate protein as easily as you assimilate and use protein. So I think we have to be careful about taking ballpark numbers. That's yeah, number how one. How do you know, though, as an individual? Well, it's very difficult, but let me give you something to go by. The typical person, the typical adult human being, will probably, can probably only use, and this is something that we've learned through science, this is not Coach Hammer saying this, this is Coach Hammer repeating this from studies and books and reading and learning and school, will probably only be able to assimilate or break down and use between 20 and 40 grams of protein at any one meal sitting. And the reason there's such a large variance is simply because, Randy, if you're not doing much and you eat a meal, then your body doesn't have a need for a ton of protein because you're not tearing down a lot of, of, of muscle to rebuild. And protein, we know, we know, rebuilds not only muscle, but it rebuilds tissue. So if you're not tearing it down, maybe you only need 20 grams at a meal sitting. But if you're working out and you've had a really tough workout and you've really torn a lot of muscle tissue, you've really used your nerve endings, your bones have really been compromised, you may be able to break down and use all 40 grams. I think the, the greatest bodybuilders in the world that go through a really incredible, very extreme muscle building, muscle tear down workout, a pro bodybuilding workout, those guys might be able to put 40 to 50 grams of protein in their body at a meal sitting. Now, they put in much more than that, but to actually use it and upload it and get the most value from it, probably not much more than that. So where do you fit in there, and where do the folks at home fit in there? So to say 40%, that's just a big number. I think it has to be broken down into what your body needs at the time, and then go ahead and take that much in. So if you're working out, is this something you take before you lift weights after you lift weights or do you work out and then at night drink it as a shake before you go to bed? Good question. How do we use protein, especially if we are engaged in activity, in working out, okay? Number one, it's been established that it's a good idea to get a little bit of protein in the system about 45 minutes to an hour prior to engaging in any type of a structured workout. Okay? where you're, you're literally placing stress or damaging tissue. Because when we work out, we actually damage tissue. We tear it down. And then, of course, we want to put back in nutrients so they can rebuild that. And that's how you get stronger, you get healthier, you develop muscle, you really begin to develop your body in a, in a positive, healthy way. So a little bit of protein with enough time in between to digest and utilize that protein and get in the system so that your body can have the ability to tear muscle fiber down and still it's not devastating to you. Then after the work, that's a pre-workout. Then after the workout, the post-workout meal should have your 20, 25, 30, 35 grams of protein. And you should take that within a half hour of working out. And if you can take it in Within t five, 10 minutes, that's even better because the body is fresh and it's ready to, it's just ready to upload all of those nutrients into the system. Now, we're t are, are you talking about something as simple as a, maybe a jog or a walk for somebody to jump in and take this protein? Does your body really break down that much if you go for a jog or you go for a walk or is it when you're lifting weights? All right, let's look at dynamics again because we're all different, right? Some person may just be, he may be a beginner and just starting on their jogging program. This is January and we're already starting, right? So an individual who's a beginner who's just jogging, that jog is going to be much more deleterious to the human body than an individual who's been jogging for the last year, okay? How long a jog is that particular one going to be? Is it going to be a very relaxed jog? Is this your day to go long distance? Or is this your day at a, at, a, at a moderate pace? Or is this your day for that jog to not be a jog? It's an actual run and you're pushing it. Are you going up hills? Are you tearing more tissue down because it's a tougher run? Okay. Yes, it can, it, this can apply to a run and should apply to a run. But unlike lifting weights or unlike moving furniture, or something like this, which is more aggressive in nature, you're probably not going to tear as much tissue down as quickly 
or as extremely, so you probably don't need as much protein. And this is where we really seem to get into trouble because we tend to eat more protein than our body needs. So, and remember, when you take in protein, increase your water. Well, what happens to protein if your body doesn't use it? Let's say you take in more than you need. Does it turn into fat like what sugar does or does your body just get rid of it? Remember the rule. The body can only use what it needs. And if it doesn't need it, it will not use it. So if you take in more protein than what your body needs at that particular time that you, do, you ingest it, the body will only take in what it needs and the rest of that protein you've taken in will eventually be converted to fat. So this is a very delicate line yes, it is. on how you use some of these supplements because that it could almost defeat exactly what you're doing. You're trying to build muscle and lose weight. You're taking too much of it and you're actually storing it as fat. You're absolutely correct. So you have to be careful because the supplement industry is a multi-million dollar industry. And those folks want you to come in and the more of their, pro their product that you take in in a year's time, the more money they make. They don't make any money if you only use a couple capfuls of that product. So they want you to take that. But whether your body needs all that or not is a completely different story. With the New Year's here and a lot of people making these New Year's resolutions, a lot of research has been done. A lot of people think, well, I need to go on a 10 mile walk. I need to go on a 10 mile run to lose weight. But the studies kind of show that if you want to burn calories faster, it's not about that 10 mile run. It's about walk a minute, run a minute, walk a minute, run 30 seconds, but at high and low levels. Intervals. 